a large group of people in our society don't believe in the notion of personality types. Perhaps you believe that people cannot be stereotyped or categorized. Perhaps you believe there is no scientific basis for any method of classification. Perhaps you believe it's too simplistic. No matter what camp you're from, personality types are and have become a really popular and interesting way to study human behavior and lots of people are making videos about personality types and one of the MBTI YouTubers Frank James is close to hitting 1 million subscribers on YouTube. Yeah, interest in personality psychology is skyrocketing. So why are people streaming in to study personality types? Why the sudden growth and in interest in the study of personality? Why are people suddenly so fascinated with Carl Jung, a guy that lived 100 years ago? So I made this video because I know a lot of you have reservations, questions, doubts about personality psychology. And if you are in doubt about personality psychology, or if you are dealing with people who don't believe in or dislike the idea of personality types, this video might help you. In this video, I'm going to show you why personality psychology can be a healthy way to understand yourself and other people. And I want to show you healthy and smart ways to use personality psychology in an ethical and positive way. Now, let's go into the arguments. First of all, do personality types even exist? Can we categorize people? Is this not just all stereotypes? First of all, yeah. The study of personality types is a tool, it's a methodology, it's not a science in the strict sense. We use personality psychology and the idea of personality types in order to get to know people better, to understand different kinds of personality traits, to understand better the decision-making process of different people, to better grasp and start to categorize and form a language to tackle and describe what we want, what we value, and what is important to us. The study of personality psychology is meant to be just that, a tool, not an exact science. The human mind, the human mind is a fascinatingly complex <laughs> thing. Yeah, I'm really at loss for words here. It's infinitely complex in fact and there is so many different variations to how to think and how to feel and how to process information no other person thinks or is or acts the same way as another person that means any method or any approach of classifying personality types is going to be a simplification you cannot be completely defined by your personality type you cannot say that anything you do or anything you say is because of your personality type or because you are introverted or extroverted. Personality psychology should not be an excuse for who you are. It should just be a reference point. Beyond that, personality psychology can be used in order to make better decisions. Personality psychology gives you a framework to understand your own mind and your own thinking and your own values. Yeah, true this, you have your own values, you have your own convictions. You are not a simple white piece of paper like anyone else completely shapeable and moldable by society. You are not 100% the result of what your capitalist society wants you to be. You are not doomed to become or to act or do whatever your education system has taught you. No, you have your own frame of mind, you have your own reference at point, you have your own perspectives, values and viewpoints. Two people can have the exact same experience as growing up and draw completely different conclusions from these experiences. Yeah, there is something core in you, something important to you, something that really matters to you that simply does not matter to the same extent to the other people around you. There has not really been a good language to understand these differences. There never has been a way to explain why you are the way you are, why you think the way you do. No, a lot of time people only explain their behavior by one frame of mind, and that is intelligence. 
The general notion in today's society is that anything you do is a result of your intelligence or your competence. That means we judge each other's and our actions by how competent or how intelligent they are. We look at each other's and our behavior purely by what we believe to be an intelligent or competent course of action. There is only good and bad in the strict sense of the word. There is no personal viewpoint. There is no personal feelings. Art cannot be understood by our values or what we personally want or like. There is an objective way of categorizing everything and that objective is money. We live in a society that is quite money obsessed and no matter what you think about that, a lot of time we find ourselves making actions purely about money. A lot of time our whole decision process, our whole thinking process is focused on uh, this core concept. Yeah, we want money, we want status, we want popularity. And so for those matters, we are prepared to do or act whatever way possible. Yeah, you got a lot of people out there that simply do and act and live in a way that will get them money, status, fame and wealth. People want to be liked, they want to be rich, they want to be successful, they want to be admired. And that means they mold and shape their own personality. They try to fit in, play the game, play by the rules, be like everyone else. But how is that working out for you? Truth is, there can only be a few winners and the question is, how happy are these winners? If you have to compromise every aspect of your personality, if you have to change every aspect of your value system, if you had to thumb on your morals and your convictions in order to get ahead, how happy are you with where you are? Do you feel good about what you've achieved or do you feel like a fraud? Do you suffer from imposter syndrome? Do you feel like you don't earn or deserve the things that you have in your life? Yeah, true it is, a lot of time when we do the right thing for the wrong reasons, we feel bad about it because we did it for the wrong reasons. That means character, integrity and authenticity should be core leading values for any person today. Personality psychology for me was a way to reframe. I have a history in politics and in politics I did everything I could to get votes, sympathy, support for my political views and for my political campaigns. I had no idea about how much I had changed and altered my personality until it dawned on me, until I crashed, until I hit the wall. Yeah, everything I said and did was scripted, prepared, planned ahead. I would write long documents, thinking out and scripting and preparing positions, proposals, how to speak, how to act. I would watch videos, focusing on bettering my social, show, social charisma. And you see how that worked out for me. Not at all, apparently. No, uh, really, what I came to realize was that being like this was exhausting. I was completely drained. I would come home from political comments and I would feel absolutely miserable. I would hate myself and I would have no idea why. Why do I dislike myself so much? Why am I so unhappy? Why am I so miserable? I've been out, I've made so many new friends, I've made so many great connections, I've been so active and I've made great strides in my political campaigns, I've uh, got the new people on board, I've got new supporters, people are backing me, people are supporting me, everything is going well, but why? Why am I so miserable? When I started digging into personality psychology, I realized that there are not just healthy people and unhealthy people, not just competent and successful people and incompetent and unsuccessful people. No, there is a whole spectrum, a whole different way of being and living. The people around me in political meetings who I disagreed with I, they didn't disagree with me because they were stupid or incompetent. No, they had different values, different interests and different viewpoints that I didn't have. And in politics, I had completely gotten taken over by the idea that my way, my political opinions, my values were more important than anyone else's. When I started digging into the study of personality and when I started realizing that people have different personality types or different ways of being, what I, mean, what I realized was 
my whole frame of mind, my whole political philosophy was founded on the idea that my way was superior to everyone else's. My values were superior to everyone else's. I had found the right way to live, act, and be. And everyone else should have this way of living, acting, and being. Yeah, through this, I thought there was only one personality type, and that was my personality type. My way of being, my life, my actions were superior to anyone else's. At the same time, I felt, like I told you before, completely miserable. And how could I be so unhealthy, so unhappy, so depressed, despite the fact that I thought I had the superior or ultimate recipe for life, that I thought I was doing the right thing, that I thought I was uh, so uh, compassionate, so uh, self-sacrificing, so great doing what I did. And yeah, there's lots of people like that. Just take the notion of the nice guy, for example. Uh, people love to bash on the idea or the people that call themselves nice guys. And a lot of time it's because it's an easy target. Nice guys are usually, in terms of status and popularity, in the bottom of society. And that means there's a few people that are going to speak out for them. Alpha males and people that consider themselves on the top in the masculine dominance, they're in the top. And that means, yeah, there is, it's more difficult to criticize such a person because such a person has power, charisma, and people backing them. No, it's easier to go for the nice guys. My point is, what I'm starting to realize is the people that... Um, call themselves nice guys. They're people that have compromised their personality, their values, their interests in order to become more liked. And in this case, to be more liked by women. Nice guys are interesting in this way because they compromise themselves and yet they find themselves sitting at the bottom, looking up, looking up at society, looking up at other men, looking up at women, find themselves feeling in the inferior position. Yeah. Guys can sometimes be inferior to women. Guys can sometimes be in the bottom of society. There is a whole spectrum, you know. It's not, we can't just put this whole patriarchy where men are over women and women are below men. No, it's a whole spectrum. There are people occupying all these positions, you know, through this, like with all ideologies, no matter what you come from, no matter if you're a feminist or what political viewpoint you have, you know, you can't create a simplistic worldview where there is simply one uh, right answer, one or two groups that are at odds with each other. No. And the same goes for personality psychology. Personality psychology, like anything else in the world, is infinitely complex. And that means if you are to study personality psychology, you must do so with humility. I see a lot of people go into the study of personality psychology from the position of superiority. My personality type, my group of people that have my values and my lifestyle and my actions and my behavior are better than all the others. Yeah, there is a tendency to bash on different groups, to bash on introverts or to bash on extroverts, to bash on anyone who is uh, uh, late, often anyone who is a bit more chaotic anyone who is a bit more emotional anyone who is too ruthless or too aggressive and there is a general lack of understanding and if you find yourself in that position if you feel like you often misunderstand other people if you often get into conflicts with other people if you find it difficult to connect with and form long-term relationships with other people yeah, the study of personality psychology might just be for you. Through this, by taking time to research and study what people say and how they describe themselves, you can develop emotional intelligence. Yeah, the study of personality psychology is probably the best starting point if you're looking to boost your emotional intelligence. Yeah, it's either that or reading. Reading can really boost your emotional intelligence because in reading you get to hear an unfiltered stream of somebody else's thoughts. You get to experience another person's stream of consciousness. In a book, when you're reading, you are inside another person's head and feeling and experiencing their thoughts and feelings. So you know, that's rare. Most of the time, we only experience other people from the surface. We see what they do 
but not why they do it. And that's why we so often misunderstand other people. When we don't know or understand other people, we often assume the worst. Perhaps it's because we struggle with our own self-image. If we don't like ourselves and other people do things that we don't like, we assume it's because they don't like us. We see it as the reaction that we already assume is there. We feel omnipresently that other people are constantly confirming their low opinion about us, about us or explaining why they dislike us or <laughs> secretly their, everything they do, every inconvenience, every problem they cause you, it's simply because they are, dislike you and they don't like you. They don't want to be around you. And they are actually uh, really malicious people. However, is that really so? Could it be that they do what they do because of who they are, because of their way of functioning and their way of enjoying life? Perhaps they just have a different sense of humor than what you do. Perhaps they just think about things differently than you do. What the things that you are sensitive to, they might not be sensitive to. And the things that you find to be normal or simple or obvious, other people might find to be sensitive or difficult to deal with. And why are we in a position to judge in those situations? Why is their trauma more pathetic than your trauma? Or the other way around, why should your trauma or your negative experiences or struggles be more shameful than what anyone else is experiencing? Personality psychology cannot completely relativize away people that are on a higher level unhealthy. No, personality psychology is not meant to be the study of mental disorders or neuropsychiatric disabilities. No, personality psychology is not about ADHD or autism or about schizophrenia or some kind of severe mental illness. There are many different ways of functioning and personality psychology has nothing to do with how we function. No, it only has to do with what you value, what you want, what you need and how you function that can still vary within every single type. You might have had different experiences to what other people do. You might have had a better upbringing. You might have had a more healthy, secure environment to grow up in. And because of that, you might appear completely different to another person of your same personality type. Yeah, take one ENFP and put them in a difficult environment and put, take another ENFP and put them in a positive, encouraging environment. And you can have two different kinds of people. Trauma hits. Negative experiences hit, struggles, mental disabilities, mental illness hits and is there. And personality psychology is not meant to be the study of unhealthy people. No, personality psychology is meant to be the study of healthy, normal ways of functioning in our society. That means Personality psychology is not going to tell you that you are broken or that you are different or that you are dysfunctional. It's not because of your personality type that you've had the bad experiences that you've had in your relationships. No, that has to do with other things like your attachment style, how your parents treated you, how your upbringing was, how secure you feel, your emotional turbulence, or how emotionally stable you are. Personality psychology is not about health, and that's not how it should be applied. Instead, personality psychology can give you a frame of reference to understand other people's thinking and point of view. When you are studying personality psychology, the first thing you want to do is just get to know other personality types. That means um, get to interviewing your friends and family members. Ask them about what gives them energy, how do they experience social settings, what do they like? What are their hobbies? What are their interests? And what is some difficult experiences that they've had growing up? And how did they deal with that? How are they normally in relationships? What are some important boundaries to them? When you start applying personality psychology towards understanding your friends, family members, your colleagues, or your partner, you also get a chance to connect. People want to talk about themselves. They want to have a language to express themselves and to share what they're doing, what they're going through and what's happening in their lives. And they want you to ask 
questions about something else than the weather. Yeah, sure. The study of personality psychology so far has no scientific basis. We cannot 100% confirm the existence of personality types. But there are many things in our society that we cannot scientifically confirm or understand or explain. And doesn't it make sense that the human mind is one of those things? The thing is, just because we can't scientifically say 100% that personality types exist or where, how to define these personality types exactly and what terminology and what the difference is and how exactly to tell them apart. That doesn't mean that it's not interesting to think about it. It's interesting to think about it because people know and have these experiences. People feel different. People struggle sometimes with connecting with you. People feel that uh, um, well, you might feel that you have interests and things that you value that other people don't want to hear about or don't care about and don't pay attention to. And personality psychology gives you a framework to understand those things and to start digging into what those things are and how does that manifest for you personally. And that brings us to the ultimate truth and that is use personality psychology as a tool not the ultimate answer, not the 100% this is how a type is and all people that of that uh, personal type act like this and have these values and do these things. No, use it as a tool. If personality psychology is a tool, the only important thing is the value or the conclusions that you're able to draw from it. That means what did you learn from that person? What did they tell you about themselves? What did they say was important to them? And how can you use that to connect to them better? If it turns out that they're really passionate about animal rights, yeah, why don't you take them to an animal shelter or help them engage in something like that that they're really passionate about? Use that as a moment to bond with them and uh, really see them at their best, you know, to see them doing something that they are really passionate about or something that they really care about. Or, hey, if they're really interested in Bitcoin, why don't you ask them about where to invest and see, uh, put in a few hundred dollars and get their advice and see what you could do and how to get started. And you know, look at how their eyes sparkle up when they get to be themselves and when they get to do something they really love. Isn't that feeling rare in our society today? You know, so often we play the social game. We just act and do what people expect us to do. We just fit the mold. We just live like automatons, like zombies. We just walk through life, getting to the coffee machine, talking about the weather, sitting down in front of our desktop, uh, putting in our hours and going home and watching TV. You know, How many times do we live on autopilot? How many times do we forget about ourselves and our own needs? Why should you want to study personality types? Why should you pay attention to these things? Why are they important? If you're not convinced at this point, I can give you one final core argument, and that is introspect. Introspect, get to know yourself better. Take your time to invest in yourself. How often do you actually listen to yourself? Personality psychology is the ultimate tool to start to really introspect and to start to really listen to yourself. Yeah, when I finally uh, got out of politics and started digging into myself, it was like I finally got peace of mind, relief, reassurance, understanding. It was like finally I had learned to tune into a channel, the number one channel on my inner television, channel number one, my channel. And that meant that I could finally start making decisions that would make me happy. And that was the start of my real growth and improvement in emotional health. After I did that, I felt better. My energy became more relaxed. I was less forced. I was less tense. I was less anxious. I felt less stress. And I felt better about myself. I liked myself more. I got to know myself better and I realized that, hey, I'm a cool guy, actually, at least for myself, I'm a cool guy. I mean, other people might not like me, but I like myself and I have a peace with my mind and I understand myself and I take time to listen to myself and I can find my own thoughts interesting. You know, <laughs> there's nothing narcissistic about that. You know, you can find yourself interesting. You can pay attention to yourself. In fact, it's the basis for emotional health and well-being. 
if you can learn to listen to yourself you can learn to understand yourself you can learn to live and act and be breathe in a way that is comfortable to you and that means living in a way that will make you happy i want to say one final thing and one final super important thing and that is seek to live a life that is meaningful we do a lot of things that simply are not meaningful a lot of things we do for money we do because it gives money not because it brings any value to society and especially not because it brings any value to us so what can you do to live a life that is meaningful the study of personality types isabella briggs works on mbti it all started with that question of what is it you want to do? What is it you're passionate about? In the Second World War, people were at the loss. People, lots of people were getting into new careers and looking for their ultimate calling, their purpose, their passion. And the MBTI can help you find that passion. So this can be the starting point to really start looking at your ideal career and what your ideal workplace should look like. I mean, ultimately, it doesn't have to mean anything has to really change. I mean, it doesn't have to mean that you have to get a different job. It doesn't have to mean that you have to get a different relationship. It just means that you have to engage in your job differently. It only means that you have to approach your relationship differently. When you can understand yourself better and if you notice that there are things that don't connect, if you notice that there are differences, okay, first of all, we're not understanding each other. My boss is forcing me to do these tasks that I really don't like and that really don't fit me. When you notice these discrepancies, that doesn't mean, okay, I have to quit or okay, I have to break up or oh, it's over, 100%, it's done. No, what it can mean is you need to have a conversation with your boss. Talk to them and say, okay, so I've been doing a lot of these tasks, but I think I would do a lot better in that kind of a role. I want to transition at work. Can we make an action plan to what I can do in order to get more into those tasks? Or, or okay, I'm stressed by this in our workplace or environment. I think it's too noisy, or too many people are too busy. Could I have my own room or could I work more from home? A lot of time there are changes you can make at your workplace that will make things better. And the same goes for in your relationship. If you find that your partner is not giving you enough alone time, you can communicate that with them and start looking at, okay, what is healthy for us in order to have a good balance of social interaction and space? Or if you feel like your partner is too distant, and if you feel like you need somebody that is more interactive and that makes more of an effort to connect with you, have a conversation with that person and see, okay, what can we do in order to change that? This is what is important to me. I want to hear what's important to you, and I want to see what we can do in order to find a healthy balance between each other's. The study of personality types, according to Carl Jung, was all about this, helping people understand each other's better. But ultimately, there are so many different ways of approaching personality psychology. So why do you do it? Why do you think personality psychology could help you? And how do you feel? What do you feel is the ethical way to use personality psychology and personality types? If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.